so uh, this is why I think webinars will be beaten by books in 2020. See, I just did it again. So here's an overview of, let's just call it webinars. And I put it in quotes for a specific reason. I'm not like being sarcastic. It's just, we're just going to call this webinars. Um, and uh, this is really impactful, important for people, let's just say in their junior year, their Facebook ads agency journey. So they have something that works. They built a program and now they're ready for more clients and customers. They don't have a problem fulfilling the order. They don't have a problem servicing customers. They've already established the fact that when they take on a client, they don't lose time. And when they take on a client, they get better at servicing their clients. When they take on a client, it's better for everybody and they make more money and they gain time, not the other way around, right? So here's an overview of how webinars work. So we're going to start right here with the ad. Uh, everybody here understands the concept of an ad. I don't have to talk about it a lot. Everybody gets it. Um, and ideally, what happens, by the way, is, is it's, it's ad and then webinar and then money. And you could make an argument that, that maybe it needs to be ad to mini webinar into VSL. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about specifically a good old fashioned 45 minute Russell Brunson, Sam Oven style webinar. That's what I'm talking about. This is how webinars are supposed to work. And ideally what happens is you put $1 in and then you get $2 of money out. That's how webinars are supposed to work. It's simply a automatic salesperson. That's how it's supposed to work. But the interesting part is that it, it never really works this way. It's supposed to, but, but this is theoretical. This is just slide decking. In real life, it doesn't quite work that way. What you have to do is you have to spend like $1,000 and hopefully you get $2,000 of the money. Now this ratio is still kosher. Everybody here is saying, yeah, that's cool. Makes complete and total sense. I'm not hating on this journey in this process. The, uh, the problem is the devil in the details kind of thing. So, you know, you can't just do $1,000 into one ad. Facebook won't know what to do. It's too much money too fast. So what you really need is uh, multiple ads. So let's just do this right here. So you're going to have... Let's say ad number one, and then ad number two, and then ad number three, just like that. And then ideally what happens is uh, you've got, let's just say um, 2,000 divided by three, I probably sh or 1,000 divided by three. I probably shouldn't have done a weird number, right? So let's just say it's uh, 300 bucks, $33 here. And then 333 here, and then 333 here. All right, a little bit more advanced, but it's okay. Uh, a single person can do this. Uh, you don't need a whole team. You don't need to be an expert in ads and all that. You can just do three different types of videos or three different types of images. Whatever it is, it's fine, no big deal. But very quickly, you find out that like, oh, that's that's not how this works. You actually need an audience. You need to pick your audience. Okay, fine, whatever, no big deal. So you'll have like, let's just say audience number one, right? Um, and then you're going to have audience number one, and then you're going to have uh, your ads right here. At, and then like that, and then like this. Ad number one, number two, and number three. And again, this is really not that big of a deal. This is just how normal advertising works. This isn't, shouldn't shock anybody. Um, but after a while, what will happen is you say, oh, you know what? I I really need different audiences. So you've got this going on here, and then you've got this going on here. No, oh, come on. And then this going on here. And what'll happen, by the way, is, is now you've got nine different ads that all need money. So it's $1,000 divided by nine. So this is really $111. And this is not that big of a deal, not that big of a concept, but it's okay, right? So you've got uh, your thousand dollars divided amongst three different audiences and three different ads. So it's nine, right? Fine, whatever, no big deal. Um, and you can't actually push these people directly to a webinar. Facebook doesn't like that. You got to like collect their information first kind of thing. And unless you're like a Frank Kern, you just don't have the testicular fortitude to brute force your way through all this. Um, we're just assuming that you're new to the block, right? So what you have to do, let me grab this box right here, is you really need to collect their information. So you really need a landing page 
cool, fine, no big deal. Uh, but you discover very quickly that you know what you need to have like to be need to be testing stuff, and and you're spending a thousand dollars a day on ads, and you're like, I don't want to know if this is going to work or not. A week from now, after I spent like five or six or seven thousand dollars, I need to know if this is going to work. I need feedback from the universe. So you've got three different landing pages. Landing pages. Cool, no big deal. So you've got this going into here. Oh, let's do arrows. This going into here. And then this going into here. And then this going into here. And um, you can use any like landing page software. They'll sort it out for you. You don't have to actually have three separate landing pages. You can use a tool like Unbounce or ClickFunnels. The main result is, is you're trying to figure all this out. Um, and then you're like, you know, I really need to know if this is going to work. So you bring in a, a new kind of software stack. Uh, and this could be, let's just say, um, Wicked Reports. So you know actually which ad and which ad set and which audience actually push them to a landing page so that you actually get um, a sign up. Cool. You got a name, number, and email. Name, number, email. This is literally the first part of a webinar. This is before people have even watched your webinar. It's a whole lot of huff and puff, but this is Facebook ads agencies. This is really no big deal. As a concept, everybody here should get this. So let me just copy and paste this real fast. And this is not readable. <laughs> let me fix that real fast. Okay, so let me make some space. Shrink down the text size. Is that doable? Uh-oh. I think I might have goofed it. Let me see if I can grab all these boxes as I intend to. Format options. No, the cursor disappeared. Uh-oh. All right, hold on. Let me grab all this. Let me shrink this down. All right, cool. So let's make this like a an 8. There we go. And then let's shrink this down. So this is your ad strategy for your webinars, which by the way, if your ad strategy doesn't work, your webinar is like dead on arrival. Like if you don't have people looking at your stuff, it's not going to happen. This is literally pre-webinar. This is not like the webinar itself. This is just the ad strategy that powers the webinar. Fine, no big deal. And then hopefully, by the way, name, number, and email, and then you send them to a, let's just call it a show up page. Thanks so much for signing up. My name is Sam Ovens. I'm super happy that you're here. Um, we're doing a live webinar this coming Wednesday at 2 p.m., right? Be sure to set it up. Be sure to put it in your calendar, and I'll see you then type of thing. And then hopefully the uh, live webinar, uh, everybody shows up. doesn't really happen that way, but this is just the stereotypical scenario. You show up page, and then they do a live webinar Wednesday at 2 o'clock. And then you have to actually do your webinar, actual webinar. So blah, blah, blah. Here you go. This is the actual webinar. By the way, guys, uh, I want to show you what a uh, perfect funnel, or sorry, a perfect webinar looks like. This is the perfect webinar by Russell Brunson, who is arguably one of the best at webinaring or building a marketing agency or something like that. This is the uh, webinar right here, perfect webinar. You can pay Russell Brunson like five or six bucks or just Google perfect webinar. But now you've got your actual like webinar. So let me go ahead and, and copy and paste this. We're gonna put that in right here. You have your actual webinar, just like that. By the way, your webinar has to have a very distinct and purposeful sentences, uh, such as, let me go ahead and do it like this. So you have to have an intro that keeps them. And then you have to have inception moments, sometimes called an epiphany bridge or something like that. And then you have to have a story. And then you have to have proof. And let's just say testimonials. And then what else do you have? Uh, you have to deal with their secrets. Uh, got secrets here. And then you have to sell. Sell. So like that's the, that's the whole webinar. And by the way, if any of these are like, if any of these are broken, you will not 
be, you will not have a webinar that works. So you literally just did all this setup for a webinar that just doesn't work, but that's fine, no big deal. And then hopefully what happens here is that somebody pays you money, hopefully. But here's what's interesting, by the way. So these ads right here, stereotypically only perform with something called curiosity. And you'll see like the one hack or the, the three things that you didn't know about or the uh, blow you out of the water process or our secret systems, some type of curiosity. So somebody is curious, curious enough into going into your landing page. If your ad doesn't have curiosity, if you're simply saying, hey, I run customer research so that all this stuff works, nobody's gonna click through. You have to have a, a strong level of curiosity. Um, and then, by the way, with this, you have to be Facebook ads compliant with your landing page, which is really not that big of a deal, but fine, whatever. Um, and then you also have to deal with the fact that um, the, that ever webinar uh, bombs your email campaign, something like that. And here's what I mean. So this is not completely done. After this ends, you have your, let's just say, um, come back sequence, which is says, Hey, like come back to the webinar. It's going to be great. All that fun stuff. Come back to the webinar and your comeback sequence. will have something like, let's just say email number one. This is all stuff that happens before you go live guys. I'm not kidding. Like this is a whole lot of stuff. So email number two, email number three. And then you've got texts and voicemail drops. All this has to be on point. By the way, if you're using a tool like EverWebinar to do your webinar, uh, it turns out they push all of the email comeback sequences through the same IP and it's all spam and it's all gross and the deliverability of your emails and your text message voicemail drops goes to shit. It's absolutely horrible. Like you'll probably never catch anybody back. Um, and then you got to do your Facebook ads. And then, only then, hopefully, you get $1 in and $2 out after all this is set up correctly. After all of this is set up correctly. But here's the kicker. It's not always $1 in and $2 out. Again, this is for normal real life human beings. I don't mean somebody that like studies this for a living. I don't mean like a top 1% expert. I don't mean like an Alex Beck or Sam Ovens or Russell Brunson. I don't mean that. I mean for the average normal middle 80% of an agency or that's looking to webinar, it's not $1 in and $2 out. It's this. Let me put this just like this. The money. Oh money timeline with webinars. This is what happens. What you really want is $1 in. Let's just say $1, come on, Facebook ads, and then $2 in sales. That's what you want. It makes complete and total sense. Everybody gets it. That's how marketing works. And maybe you can make an argument that it should be higher or lower depending upon your business or your industry, but but fine, whatever. But that's, that's not how this works because ideally what you want is to say that this is within 24 hours. Because that's called cash on cash, daily balance type thing. Like if every single day putting $1 and $2 out, it's going to work. But it's not really quite like that. It's um, all right, this should be an arrow. It didn't work. Ideally, this is within 24 hours, but it doesn't quite work that way. So what usually happens is you do $1,000 a day for, let's just say, three, four days. And then on the fourth day, you make, let's just say, $6,000. This is really... four times 24. So this is really 96 hours. That's four days, almost a whole half week where you spent $4,000 and then you made six grand. Okay, that's fine. Maybe it could work, maybe it's not. 
But then there's going to be the algorithm which messes you up. So you're going to spend a thousand dollars a day every day, and then on the seventh day you still haven't made any sales. So that is literally ninety six times times twelve. Nope, sorry, seven times twenty four. One hundred sixty eight hours of spending a thousand dollars a day every day. Let's just say seven days. And on the seventh day, you still haven't made any sales. You're going to freak out and you're going to say, oh my God, why isn't this working? It's going to happen. So you're going to go back to this right here. Why isn't this working? And what you're going to do is you're going to go back and you say, okay, maybe it's the ads that are wrong, right? So let me go ahead and, and, and turn this one off and turn that one off and, and put $333 into here. You know, maybe the audience is wrong. So let's turn that off altogether and you're going to start messing around with it. It's going to happen all the time because you're spending $1,000 a day to start your webinar. And then you're going to say, oh my God, you know what? I, I think it's a problem with the actual webinar itself. So you're going to rebuild your whole webinar. You're going to have different secrets, you have different processes, different stuff. You're going to cut, copy, and chop. And then you're going to have to call every webinar and say like, hey, how can we run like a split test on the webinar? I want to change the back half. So you're going to cut, copy, and paste. And then you're going to realize, oh my God, it's actually because the email sequence and it's not any good. And you're going to freak out. And the reason you're going to freak out is because it's 168 hours to get feedback from the universe. Seven days to go without a sale, which really sucks. And if you don't believe that's the case, look at, uh, look at the Facebook groups that are powered by webinar sales. Some of them have not had any new members in about a week. Sam Ovens hasn't had any new members in about a week. You can say arguably not because he had a huge uh, Black Friday sale and made like a quarter million, 250 members, but it's 160 hours to get a feedback from the universe. You can look at get clients. They haven't had a steady growth in 30 days minimum. So you're spending $1,000 a day and you're gonna say, oh my God, I have to spend more money and more money and more money. And the end result is something is broken and you don't know what, and then one day it all works and it's because Facebook decided, you know what? Uh, Bloomberg is spending a million a day and beating you out and you don't know why. Nobody told you that somebody's spending a million dollars a day target your audience. Nobody told you that Apple is unloading a huge dollar campaign targeting digital marketers. No one ever told you that you are being outbid. And then, no one ever told you that Facebook algorithm is just being funky and you should wait it out. Keep in mind, waiting it out costs you $1,000 a day minimum. For me, and I think for most people on this call, waiting seven days for feedback sucks. Really bad, especially when you're spending $1,000 a day. This is a function of webinars. And yeah, webinars work, but you know what's even crazier? Sometimes webinars are liars. And I know this because when I did my webinar, I was trying to figure out how to emulate the level of interaction that Russell Brunson had on his webinars. And then the guy said, hey, I just want to let you know that every time he says, give me one in the chat, that's not real people. I was like, what are you talking about? It literally says live at the top. He goes, no, 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 that's not real. I go... So it's not a live webinar. He goes, that's correct. I go, okay, I could buy that. But I said, but aren't those real life people? He goes, no, no, no. You see, most webinar platforms that you fake the interaction and fake the chat and fake the buying. You can literally fake the table rush. And when that I discovered that, I realized that like I hate webinaring because you can fake the responses. You can fake the chat, fake the buying, fake the table rush. And now, by the way, out of 1,000 people, 900 plus aren't real. Again, these aren't real numbers, but you get what I mean. I got the feeling I was being to say, or I was Mark. Literally, a huge construction of, of epiphanies and inceptions and, and, and objection handling just because they wanted to get me. And I hated that feeling so much. 
out of a thousand people in the room, 900 aren't real. Like that sucks for the person trying to spend money with the webinaring person. More so the person webinaring spent $1,000 to get, let's just say 100 people in the room. And of 100 people, let's just say 100 people to sign up. And of the 100 people that sign up, let's just say 30 show up. And of the 30, I think, what is it? 30 times 0.05, one, two, or even three end up buying. Like that, like that's not good, right? Like that just seems fake from both ends. From the person in the room realizing he's, that everything is not interactive, not real, that it's a fake live. By the way, I did a fake live. I hated it so much. I canceled it immediately. Like it just, it's just bad. And then the person doing the webinar has to spend $1,000 to get 100 people to sign up, only 30 show up, and then hopefully one or two or three end up buying, let's just say, my $1,000 thing. And then hopefully you, the webinaring person, and an ROI to spend back into a leaky, faulty, and fraudulent system. This is why I don't like webinaring. Like it, it just feels fake. And until it no longer is fraudulent, like I can deal with leaky because you can beat that with like emails or text messages or something, but like I don't like the fraudulentness behind it. What I want is someone to say, here's what you get and here's how much it costs. Like, I really enjoy the idea that like I can have a mature adult conversation with myself without being lied to through this type of curiosity. By the way, when your ads are based upon curiosity, Facebook really likes shutting you down for MLM, work from home, stuff like that. And then you have to prove that you're not MLM and not work from home. And then you get a demerit on your ad account and then you just magically get banned. So running ads en masse to a message that's this one secret that grew me from zero to $30,000 a month does not work when you're spending real money. Facebook will say, so what's the secret? Please be more obvious with your business plan. And now your entire curiosity-based audience, ads, landing pages, webinars breaks. It sucks. What I want is someone to say, here's what you get and here's how much it costs. And by the way, when a webinar is selling a $1,000 curiosity-based product and you get it and realize it's something else, you hate it. Like it, it just, you end up hating it very, very quickly. And, and I think it's fundamentally because it's $1,000. Like it was curiosity based, like 97 bucks or $5 and 60 cents or whatever it is. Like you wouldn't hate it as much because it would probably be worth it. Like they can just give you so much stuff that, okay, fine. It was worth it type thing, which is how I want to do my book. But selling a thousand dollar curiosity based product and you realize it's something else, you end up hating it. You give feedback to Facebook. Facebook says, this is horrible. They start downvoting your ads and refund rates shoot through the roof all because you're trying to webinar because somebody out there said, this is the best way of doing it. And you know what? There, this is bad. Like, like this is really bad. Like, why can't we just say like, this is what you get. This is everything in it. You're gonna absolutely love it. It's cheap as dirt. It's amazing. It's perfect. This is my problem with webinars right here, all of this. And so this is why I think books will beat the webinars in 2020.